They should get all the credit. I'm glad they got that right. A little bit embarrassing on the sidelines, I must say. Very childish. Score another one. Move on. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of Let's Talk Footy. I'm your host Shaheen and I'm super happy to be here. Today we're going to talk about a few important games that just happened. The biggest of them all was the Real Madrid against Barcelona game, the El Clasico. And what a game. Both teams obviously just played in the Champions League, Real Madrid with, a, with an amazing and difficult win against Man City on penalties and Barcelona obviously off of a very very disappointing loss against PSG where they were heartbroken because they went down to 10 men and that was very heavy and difficult for them it was a tough pill to swallow and they had to bounce back going into the game in La Liga Barcelona was 8 points behind Real Madrid and with only 6 games left in the league this was a must win game for Barcelona Barca had to win Barca had to give it everything they had to be able to stay in the title chase. Real Madrid really just needed a draw or uh, a win would have been amazing. It would have meant title is basically for Real Madrid. Barca started the game very strong, put Real Madrid under pressure right away. Real Madrid struggled with set pieces all game long and very early in the game, Barca had a corner kick and they were able to score on Real Madrid and take the lead 1-0. Real Madrid had to bounce back again, they had to come from behind like they usually do or recently have been doing, especially against Man City in the Champions League. Real Madrid started attacking, started uh, causing some issues and actually started controlling the game and uh, getting the best chances in the game, especially in the first half. Real Madrid was able to come back through a penalty, Vinicius scored the penalty and 1-1 it was. Similar to the first half, second half could have gone either way, uh, but Barcelona was able to take the lead first uh, in the 69th minute. However, that lead didn't last very long and Real Madrid was able to once again beautifully come back and tie the game 2-2 through Lucas Vasquez. Now it's important to mention that in the second half, Barcelona also had a goal that was a bit controversial. Did the ball cross the line? Did it not cross the line? From the footage that the referees were seeing and judging from, uh, it was very difficult to see if the ball crossed the line or not. After the game, obviously, there is some new evidence or some images that have come out that showed that the ball might have crossed the line, but the referees had to go off of what they had in their disposal, and there was no evidence that the ball had completely crossed the line. So. I understand Barcelona fans and Barcelona players and Xavi, the manager who has been a little bit embarrassing on the sidelines, I must say, very childish and unprofessional, but there's no point in whining and crying about it. These things happen in football all the time. It's happened in the past, it's going to continue happening in the future, hopefully not as much with the uh, advancement of technology, but you can't just cry about a goal that that we're not even sure about. We're not 100% confident that the whole ball crossed the whole line. So for them to whine about that and for the president to say, oh, they're gonna look into it and they're gonna request for a replay of the game, etc., etc. It's just very whiny, it's very childish. Like, move on, get on with the game. You scored a goal, maybe it didn't count. Score another one. You guys took the lead twice. Barcelona took the lead twice and Real Madrid came back and scored right away. So it's not like if Barcelona's goal counted or if that goal stood, Barcelona was all of a sudden going to win the game. No. So to just cry about that and whine about that and say the goal should have stood and it was unfair, blah, blah. Yeah, it sucks, but it's happened before. It's happened before, it's going to happen again. Move on. Towards the end, the game looked like it was going to finish at 2-2. But of course, Jude Bellingham was thinking differently. It had to be Jude Bellingham. Obviously, uh, in the first league fixture against Barcelona at Camp Nou, Bellingham scored both of the goals when Real Madrid defeated Barcelona 2-1. And at 2-2 in the Santiago Bernabeu, after a dramatic win midweek in the Champions League, Bellingham came through and he scored that beautiful goal. It was a really good play by Real Madrid. And once again, Bellingham's anticipation and game awareness to be in the right place at the right time to read that play was fantastic. And let me tell you something, the finish, the, the tap in, if you want to call it, that's a very difficult finish. That's a very difficult goal to score. So 
Bellingham has done it again. He's won the game for Real Madrid once again in the final minutes of the game. But he's done it against Barcelona, Real Madrid's biggest rivals. With that win, Real Madrid is not 11 points clear in the table. And I think we can all say that the league is not secure for Real Madrid. Obviously, mathematically, it's not done yet. Barcelona has a tiny bit of hope, but it doesn't look like Real Madrid's going to be giving the league away. So yeah, well done Real Madrid and move on Barcelona. We're also going to talk about the FA Cup semi-final, specifically the Coventry Man United game. <sighs> what can I say, man? Man United obviously started the game very strong, scored two goals, 2 nothing at halftime, scored a third goal in the second half, but amazing bravery and resilience and performance from Coventry. The way they came back and they tied the game 3-3, they should get all the credit. We're going to talk about how bad United was, but before we get to that, Coventry to stay in the game, 3-0 down, all odds are against them. They knew they were playing against Man United and anything can happen and how inconsistent Manchester United is. And they were able to tie the game 3-3 and that fourth goal in the extra time, that saved Man United. I mean, I, I really, really wish that that fourth goal stood. Coventry won 4-3 and they went to the finals. Not because I don't like Man United, but I truly believe they deserved it for a championship team to come, to play like that, to come back from being 3 nothing down and tie the game 3-3 and then look like the stronger team in extra time and score the fourth goal. Wow, hats off to them. Even though they lost the semifinals on penalties, to me, they were the true winners, and hats off to them. Now, speaking about Man United, I, I just don't understand how people, pundits, players, managers, critics, how anybody can say Man United must be doing better. Man United's standards are higher than this. Man United needs to win this championship, win this, win that. I hate to break it to you, but Man United has proved in the past 10 years that they are not a very average team. Manchester United is exactly performing how they are, how they should. They are very inconsistent, they are a very mid-table team, they are not better than a championship team, and they prove that every single week, and they prove that in the semi-finals against Coventry. So for people to come and say, Oh my God, this is United. United has to do this, United has to do that. No coach is gonna be able to save United. Like Eric Ten Hag is doing the best he can do with what he has at his disposal. Eric Ten Hag can only do so much. Many, many great managers have come before him and they haven't been able to solve the problems that Manchester United have. Great players have come and they haven't been able to help Manchester United. So, like I said a few weeks ago, Man United is exactly where they should be. They got very fortunate and lucky to go to the final of the FA Cup. That might save their season, but even that, just the embarrassment of winning a game like that, in that fashion, to throw a three nothing lead, to play that inconsistently. You could see it in their faces, they didn't, they couldn't even celebrate, and rightly so, they shouldn't have celebrated, so I'm glad they got that right. I don't even know what to say, like, Man City is gonna eat them alive in the FA Cup Final. Miracles need to happen, I mean, every now and then, they've been able to pull some wins here and there against bigger teams, but even their win against Liverpool, let's say. That wasn't because Man United was amazing, that was because Liverpool was very off on that night. They won that game because Liverpool was weak. Liverpool wasn't where they should have been, how they should have been. Not because Man United was great. So let's see what's going to happen in the FA Cup final. I'm pretty sure Man City is going to take that one. So you could say, you know, two FA Cup finals for Man United in two years. Good. Yeah, that's what you should be happy with. That's that's a big achievement for Man United. And even Eric Ten Hag said that. Yeah, 100% it is. Because for an average team like Man United, Making it to the FA Cup final is decent. Well done, good stuff. But no, no chance they're going to be getting into the top four in the Premier League or even compete for the league. In Europe, they're nowhere close to the likes of Liverpool, Man City, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Arsenal, 
even AC Milan, Inter Milan, like Man United is far off. So I think Man United and Man United fans need to stop being a bit delusional. They need to be a bit more realistic and understand that this is how it's going to be for a long time. Best way to improve is to understand that your average, understand the problems that you have and try to slowly work your way back up. But as you're improving, all the other teams around you are going to be trying to improve. So well done United, I guess. What an embarrassment. Hopefully they don't embarrass themselves even more in the FA Cup final against Man City. Let's see how they finish in the league. But yeah, that was very interesting to see. It really sucks that Coventry didn't win. I really, really, really wish that they did, but it is what it is. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the podcast, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. And I will see you next time. Take care.